Shenak at the heat leash, Shachat Maha, Wavanoker, Ek Hamilton, Achadraste, Hashin Kunikuk, or John eh, John Lambie, Nach Madden, eh, Manager of Huchi, eh, Partick Thistle, Agus Hamilton, Ein Hunifri of League. At the time I was a young player I just thought he was a crazy old man to be honest with you but it wasn't until I realised you get older that you realise how good a job he did and, and the decisions he'd done and the crazy things he said weren't they just for um, a laugh, he'd done it for certain reasons um, to get the best out of the players and the best out of the club. John could be off the planet at times but he was a manager who always had your back. Lambie just simply took uh, good, honest journeyman pros uh, and got a hell of a lot out of them at a particular stage in these guys' career. I think it's been well documented that he maybe took players that, that other people didn't fancy. Um, he certainly didn't have to get the best out of them, that's for sure. He was a man of the people. He was very down to earth. Very, very much respected by colleagues, both players, managers. He was one of these guys, you know, you could have, you know, a debate with or a maybe a wee bit heated argument about something. He would always say he won it, but he was... It doesn't matter what way it went, he would always speak to you after it. It was, no, it was never a guy who would hold a grudge or fall out of you, that, that type of guy. John Lambie as a man and a manager was absolutely a one-off. He was incredible in how he managed the two of them. As a man, his integrity, his honesty and how he dealt. First and foremost as football players, because that's where you come across him. And um, what I loved about John was that honesty. Just a great character to be around, full of life, charismatic. Um, and just somebody that you just, when you were in his, his company, you just you couldn't help but enjoy yourself. Hamilton at that time, um, late 70s, early 80s, were a very, very ordinary middle-ranking team in the, in the middle league, with three leagues in those days. Uh, and then John Lambie came on, uh, came in, the team moved on, the team went full-time, we won the Reserve League Cup and then won the First Division Championship not good enough for the Premier League, came back down and then won the First Division Championship again. When we won it for the second time, 87-88, it was a 44-game season and we were top every single day of the season. Day one to day 44, we led the league. He trusted you. He brought experienced players in that didn't cost them money and he had faith in them going on the part that knew how to play the game. He didn't have to sort of put a game plan out. He was a great motivator, great in addressing them and he mixed with his players, but the players knew he went to have a laugh with him and, and went to be serious. The guys would look after one another on the park because he wanted that. He wanted to see everybody, you know, uh, digging together, so to speak, and, you know, fighting, for, you know, we'll win together, we'll lose together, that was it. Uh, and we had that in the dressing room and we'd sort things on the park. We'd, it looked as if we, nobody liked one another at one time on the park, but it's not true, it's just everybody wanted to win. And that's the kind of a spirit he had here at uh, Hamilton. A lot of people maybe don't give him quite the credit that he deserves uh, as a tactician. There's one famous instance, we're very close to Ibrox just now, where Hamilton beat Rangers in the Scottish Cup at Ibrox, 31st of January 1987. And Graham Soonis, after the match, I was standing with John Lambie outside the away dressing room, and Graham Soonis came up to him, shook his hand, congratulated him on his victory, and, and said the team was set up really very well, tactically, very assured, very professional performance. Graham Souness' Rangers that season, it was the start of the, the modern era of Scottish football. Souness was bringing in big uh, superstar English players, players that play for England World Cups, England captain Terry Butcher came in. To go to the Ibrox and, and beat Rangers, man, that was a miracle. People say they don't believe in miracles. I do because it was a miracle that day because Rangers absolutely hammered us. We beat them 1-0 and it was a big feather on John's cap because we had a game plan that day and it worked a treat. So for somebody like Graham Souness to say that to John Lambie after the game proves that he was a master tact tactician in every respect. You know there's, there's some places and some teams that just people are just 
destined to, to be there and for, for things to, to work out. And I think the character of John and the character of, of this club and, and what this club means to, to so many people um, it was, it was the, the perfect fit. John said that himself. He, he went to Falkirk for a brief spell and it didn't work out and he came back to the place that he called home. And they really were good for each other. Um, and that people always say there's a magic, magicalness about Patrick Thistle. And I think John um, seen that in the club and it brought the best out in him as well. Bizarrely, I was a Hamilton Aki supporter when I was a tiny kid. That's who you know, my, my dad got his season tickets to go and see them. So that was my very first experience of him was what he achieved at Hamilton Aki, so I think that's a fair statement as well, Patrick Thistle, John Lambie, uh, the two the two names just sort of ring off the tongue together. Four times that he's went back there as manager, and that's the club that he'll all be associated with, that's the club that he's had good success, you know, I was absolutely one and delighted to be his captain in two back-to-back -back, uh, winning championships, but more importantly, at the latter, um, when we come out of football together, um, to be call him as a, a, a dear friend. That was probably the lowest ever, the, 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 the football club that I've been involved in. At that time, we were looking at getting relegated, we were a penalty kick away from not, and, and John came in at that time, saved us to stay in that league, and then built on it. When he went back in there in his third spell, and he worked absolutely magic. You know, the club was in the balance, of whether it would survive or not. Um, and they managed to do that in the next again season. Um, we didn't look back. And for me, you know, when I look back and I look at the the mem my memories at Partick Thistle, those two years uh, with John Lambie for taking the club for the third tier of Scottish football to the top tier will live long in my memory. John being able to, to catapult us straight back up um, because we've saw the other side of it. We've saw how you can go the other way just as quick. So um, it was a fantastic achievement and it, it's really um, set a, a, a base that, that we've been able to, to build on over the the last 10 years or so. And, and what he'd done in the three seasons, or four seasons, sorry, was quite incredible, to go and get the back-to-back -back promotions and stay in the league comfortably um, in a shoestring budget um, was nothing short of a miracle. It was the most successful period in my career and I probably took it for granted a little bit at the time. I didn't put two and two together and um, maybe give him the credit he deserved for, for what he achieved and we achieved at the club at that time. It was, it was a phenomenal achievement. There's no doubt that both at Hamilton and part of Thistle, he brought a sense of belief back to the support that they could compete at the highest level. And of course, part of Thistle now in the top flight, Hamilton now in the top flight. So you could well say that the embryonic stages of these clubs' development uh, over the last 20 years was brought about by John Lambie's influence as a manager. Know your, you've got to know your pigeons, the same as you've got to know your players. Uh, you know your players to get the best out of them. The one thing that I would say with pigeons and, and, and footballers is they need motivated to win. Everybody bemoans the, the lack of characters in the game, so to lose one of the biggest that I've ever came across, he's, he, he is irreplaceable, you know, and without a doubt. Um, he, he lit up so many occasions for herself, even though we didn't get to see him too often over the, the last few years. Every time you did, then um, you always went away with a, with a smile on your face. And um, people like that are, are few and far between. So, yeah, he's, he's definitely someone that we'll, we'll miss dearly. You'll miss his, his one off quotes, his one liners, his uh, juxtapositions of words, all sorts of things. Uh, but there's no doubt that uh, for a good 10, 15, 20 seasons, um, he was a, a very particular, peculiar, one off, and, and a great manager. He brought a warmth, a respect, an understanding of, of, of the game to so many people that, that would affiliate themselves with John Lambie and uh, he will be, be sorely missed by everybody that I know and the wider community in general. Yeah, I think that's safe to say. Um, I think they probably broke the mould when they, when they created them. There's, there's not many people like that left in football. He was a breath of fresh air and um, will be sadly missed by the football community, that's for sure. Obviously, you know, he's had this reputation, he was a growler and that. Yeah, of course, a lot of managers were growlers in those days. But you knew what it was like, you know, you knew what you were going to get. And if you'd done the business for him on the part, you know, you'd be happy, that was it.
I think characters are going for the game now. I think in football in general, that you do miss guys like him. He brings something different. Certain things I said you wouldn't get away with in um, PC the days a bit changed a little bit, and John would find that hard to deal with. But I think Scottish football will definitely be a quiet place without him. For Scottish football, he'll be sorely missed, and for all of us that loved him so much. Follow the so follow, party the so. <laughs> There's <laughs> not a team like the Purple Jacks. By the way, we don't fear anyone, anytime, night or day. So fly the flag, keep it flying high, and follow us Jesse. everywhere. Ho, ho, ho! John Esk here looking to lay on the hens clinch in Barak, me and John Lambie Dras and the Kutia Fervak. My all look at Chick Charlie. Chick, many thanks for joining us at halftime here on BBC Alpha. Um, you knew John Lambie really well, signed you four times. Uh, what are your fondest memories of, of your former manager? I've got a million. I've got a million. He was just a, a fantastic man, very, very good to me. And um, we were just we were re real good friends, apart from being my, ma my, my manager and my mentor. What was he like as a manager? It was superb, it was superb. He, he knew the game inside out, he got promotions umpteen times and he just was he was just very good knowledge of football and an eye for a player. Obviously he signed you four times. Yeah, well, I have, that's right, well. <laughs> I signed me four times, but he also sold me for a quarter million pound and then he also freed me, I know, the following, uh, the next time he brought me back, so I don't know, it was a method in his madness somewhere. Did he get enough credit in Scottish football for what he achieved? I think the football people did thought, but others, yeah, just thought it was a wee bit eccentric and angry. But he, he, he won the, the the manager of the year with Walter Smith and Martin O'Neill were there with Celtic Rangers. So the money, no disrespect to them, the money they would, they could uh, use to buy players. Um, Lambie never had anything near that, never had a tenth of that, and he seemed to do, do well. And it, and he got the manager of the year. It was fantastic. And how do you feel he should be remembered in Scottish football? Just as. More so, a really, really brilliant guy. You know what I mean? He was just he, everybody loved him, and I've never heard anyone really seen a bad word about him. Even players that he, he discarded as well. You know, and that's, I think um, this tribute in the stand, the stand to him is, is really fitting. It's a fitting tribute, and he'll be forever remembered because it's now the, the John Lambie stand. Well, it's great. His family are here today, and um, my mother's with me as well, and she wanted to come along just because she knew him as well. And that uh, was a really good. Uh, Tribute. Great stuff, Chick. Many thanks for, for joining us at half time. Chick Charlie on the Henoch Agus Nesha Shinikavi Pio, Fiskaramar Ukle, Game Morgadiu, O League Hoon, Agus Alawa, Dolonai Eir.